Okay, I am recording this video to talk about how to deploy a Rails application to Heroku. I struggled with this for a while a couple days ago, and I finally managed to hack and slash my way into getting my app up on Heroku. And I wanted to record this video to kind of just show some of the error messages I got, some of the challenges I had, and how you can kind of hack your way past them, even if you don't really know what you're doing. Um, so hopefully this will be helpful for some people and getting their apps up and out there on the internet on Heroku. So real quick, I'm recording this Sunday, July 29th, 2012. I'm running Snow Leopard version 10.6.8 and uh, Ruby version 193, Rails 327, and Heroku um, 2.2.9. So the first thing you need to do is create an account on Heroku.com. It's really simple to do. It's free to register and it's free uh, to host small applications. So I already have an account. So I'm just going to log in. And as you see, I have a My Apps page and I don't have anything there. So I'm going to go ahead and try to create an app and upload it here to Heroku. So let me go into my terminal and let me generate a new application. I'm going to call this NFL app. And this application is going to be it's going to be a, just a list of my favorite players on the Redskins. It's going to be something really simple, just to illustrate the point of how you get things up on Heroku. So let me CD into the app, and let me go ahead and generate a scaffold called player. And this is just going to uh, have a list of players. So it'll take name as a string, team as a string, and a picture, which will be a URL to a picture on the internet. I'm sorry, string. The picture will be a URL of a string on the internet. So let me generate this scaffold. Let me uh, open up TextMate with all the information. And let me not forget to rake DB migrate, because I almost did, and I almost always forget that. And then finally, let me run my server. So we got Rails server up and going. So we should have this application working on the internet. Let's check that on localhost 3000. We have Rails application, that looks good. And then if we go to players, we should have the scaffold that we generated of name team player. All right, that looks pretty nice. So real quick, I want to populate this application with some information so when we deploy to Heroku, we can see what is and isn't working. So I'm going to alter the public index HTML file. And I just wanted to say uh, this was modified by always be coding. So that way we'll know it's not just a default Rails shell if we see something up on Heroku. And then let me quickly alter my views. So the index page is going to have a picture. I just want it to show the actual image of the player instead of just the text. And I want it, let's make it 300 for the height just so that they both fit on one page and let me then populate this with some data so let me add a player I'm gonna add Robert Griffin the third it's on the Redskins and I have an image of him right here paste that in and if we go back to the index you'll see that he's been added to our database let me add one more just for show let's add London Fletcher on the Redskins and I have an image of London Fletcher right here as well. So that's my application. It's really simple. It doesn't really do anything but I think it will illustrate the point. So I have my application now and I want to put this on Heroku so it's on the internet for anyone to see. So how do I do that? Well the first thing that we need to do is you need to create a Git repository. Well, actually, let me take that back. The first thing you need to do is install the Heroku gem. You can do that with just gem install Heroku. That should take one second, and if you're connected to the internet, that should work. So once you have the Heroku gem installed, you can then go ahead, and if you have Git, which I'm assuming everyone does, you can create a new Git repository. So I'm going to do git init, and that will initialize the Git repository in my app. And then let's look at the git status real quick, and you'll see we have all these changes git doesn't know about, so we'll add it to the staging area. And then we're going to commit those to the git repo, git commit m, first commit. So all right, if we look at git status, we should have nothing to commit. All right, so we have all of these files in our git repository. So I, I want to put them on Heroku, and it should be fairly simple to do that. 
So you should be able to log into your Heroku account with Heroku Auth Login, which I'll do always be coding at gmail.com is my email, my password I enter in. Authentication successful, great, and now I'm, lo I'm, I'm linked in actually to my Heroku account here from my command line. So I can create a new Heroku app by just hitting cre Heroku create, and this will automatically um, give it this remote repository for your Git, for the Git repository that you have. So if I go Git remote v, it's going to say, oh, I know about that Heroku repository, and I can push things into it. So that that's pretty awesome. I'm thinking this is pretty easy, so I'm just going to push it to Heroku. I have it in my Git repository. Why can't I just throw it up on Heroku? So let's see if that works. And as you can see, it doesn't. It errors out. And it gives me this message, failed to install gems via Bundler, detected SQLite 3 gem, which is not supported on Heroku. And the reason that I am getting this error is because Heroku does not know about SQLite 3. If we go to our application and we look at the gem file, we'll see that we're using the gem SQLite 3 for our database. Heroku doesn't know about that because Heroku uses Postgres for its databases. So we can actually circumvent this by specifying we're only using SQLite for development by giving it this group identifier and say group development do gem SQLite. But for production, which is what Heroku is, we want to use the gem PG, which stands for Postgres. So I make this change. I think, all right, hopefully that should fix that problem. Let me add this change to my Git repo. Uh, changed the gem file. And now let me try take two. Let's push this to Heroku. master. All right, let's see if that works. And it doesn't. It gives me this error. You added the gem file PG, run bundle install, and I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe I need to bundle install. I should have done that when you added a new gem. That's the first thing you should probably do. So let me check that. Bundle install. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And then I get this error. An error occurred while installing PG 1.04. Make sure that gem install PG for in, it succeeds before bundling. So I'm like, all right, let me gem install PG v 0.14.0. And then I get a permission denied. So I'm like, all right, let me sudo gem install PG v 0.14.0. Ask me for my computer password. And it still doesn't work. And I, I can't I don't even know what any of this means. It says failed to build gem native extension path. Like I I don't even know. I have no idea what any of that means. So I'm think I'm stuck, but then I see this little icon that says, hey, bundle install without development test. So apparently there's without command you can use in bundle install. And what I think that does, I'm not really sure, but you can actually specify which environment you don't want to bundle when you're doing your bundle. So I don't want to have production environment because the PG gem from here is what's giving me trouble. So let me try bundle install without production. And, and it works. I don't know if it did anything. So let me check git status. And apparently it did do something. It modified this file called gem gemfile.lock. So awesome. Let me add that commit it to my git and say modified the gem file dot lock uh, did I mean commit yes I meant commit so let me go back and change that alright cool and now let me try take three git push Heroku master let's see if that works Okay, and as I can see, the compiled slug, it actually managed to compile the slug, so that's good. And I don't have an error message, so I'm thinking, hey, that did that work? Let me check. 
I have my app here in my Heroku um, my app folder. I'm going to click on it. It gives me that URL. And if I click on the URL, I should see that it takes me to my app and that's the landing page I made for it. So great. Did I just push an app to Heroku? Let me check my players page and I get an error message with which Heroku really helpfully tells me is because something went wrong. Okay. So what I I thought I did it right and I'm like, alright, finally I have an app on Heroku, but clearly not. It's not that simple. So you can go to Heroku logs to to look at kind of it's kind of like the server for Heroku. It's a lot of text and I just don't know what any of it means at all. But I see like here active record statement invalid. Like this is probably really bad. And then relation players, what is it what does it say? It says the relation players does not exist. So it doesn't know about my model maybe. And as I found, the reason for this is because you actually need to, as if rake db migrate wasn't bad enough, you actually need to migrate your database on Heroku. <laughs> so you need to Heroku run rake db migrate, which will <laughs> run the migration on Heroku. So you got to remember to rake db migrate, and then you got to remember to Heroku run rake db migrate also. <laughs> and now it creates the table and runs the migration. So now I'm thinking, all right, I might I solved it. Let's let's go and all right, I get my my page, which is great. I mean, I get my form working, but I don't have the data that I added to the database previously when I was doing it in TextMate. And the reason for this is that the database we create in TextMate is created in an SQL Lite database. The, the instructions, such as the migrations, are written in Ruby. Heroku doesn't use the SQLite database. That is irrelevant to it. But the instructions written in Ruby, it can read. These are database neutral. And then interpret that and put it into Postgres, which is what Heroku uses. So my instructions to create the table are in Ruby. They're in my migration file. They're right here. This is Ruby. Heroku understands this. But the actual content of the database is stored in SQL Lite. It's not stored in Postgres. So that's not going to transfer over to Heroku. And you know, for my app, that's fine because I just added two images. It'll take me one second to just add them to Heroku. But what if you had an app with a lot of information in it and you didn't want to have to write it all over in Heroku? Is there any way to just get the information and put it in your app? And the answer is yes you can actually use your db seed file because in the db seeds file this is ruby instructions to the computer to create a database and it doesn't matter which database it is that's the database's job to figure out how to you know interpret that but you can give instructions to your db seed file to create a database and heroku will understand that and write it into postgres so I mean, if you do have an SQL Lite database, you could probably run a script that, like something that I'm going to do now. I'm just going to say playerarrow.create uh, name Robert Griffin the third, and I could just copy and paste this or parse it somehow, but it's only two people, so I'm just going to, you know, type it in myself just to show you Redskins, and then uh, his picture. I had that URL for it. Where is that at? Right here. And let me just uh, control shift D, copy that down, uh, add London Fletcher as well. And his picture I have also right here. And I add it on. So I'm giving my seed file instructions. And then I'm going to add this file like a sleeper cell to Heroku, tell Heroku to run it, and then create my database or recreate my database if I have a lot of information in it using Postgres in Heroku. So let me go to my command line. Let me add this to git. Let me commit it saying uh, added seed file. Uh, let me then go ahead and push this up to Heroku. All right, so if I checked my Heroku app right now, I would see that I don't have those pictures of the players that I have in the local app. I don't have them in Heroku. But let me 
go ahead now that I gave Heroku that sleeper cell. Let me say get, I mean, I'm sorry, Heroku run rake db seed. Take the Ruby instructions, translate them to Postgres, seed your database with the instructions I gave you. And once it's done running that, it should have added it to its database. So this is the Heroku app right here. And if I click return, I'll see that I have my information that I was storing locally now transferred to Heroku. And I can go and I can change the URL of this and have my Heroku app up and running on Heroku. So, I mean, I, I don't know what a lot of these error messages mean or some of the problems, but like, I, that just hacked and, you know, read docs and kind of figured out how to, you know, halfway push my freaking app up onto this, uh, up on a Heroku. So, hopefully, uh, that's somewhat helpful, you know, if you get some of those error messages. I think there's, there's a few other errors that you can get. Um, but, I mean, hopefully that helps some people in figuring out how to get your stuff on Heroku. So thanks a lot, and remember, always be coding.